Let's go over the law of sines. The law of sines states that side A divided by the sine of angle A is equal to side B divided by the sine of angle B is equal to side C divided by the sine of angle C. So the A, B, and C on the bottom are all angles, and the little a, little b, and little c are sides. Make sure that little a is always located across from capital A. So on question number one, little a is 7, capital A is 26. That's the fraction we're going to start with. 7 divided by the sine of 26. So always match up the side across from the angle to make your fractions. On question number one, we're asked to find segment AC, which is actually asking us to find little b. Little b is across from the angle 69. The two fractions form a proportion, which means they're equal. They're equal fractions. To solve a, a proportion, we cross multiply. So we multiply the diagonals and they will always be equal. So seven times the sine of 69 is equal to little b times the sine of 26. To get b by itself, we divide by the sine of 26. So b is equal to seven times the sine 69 divided by the sine of 26. We put this in our calculator. Make sure your calculator is set to degrees, not radians. 7 sine 69. Let me grab my calculator here. Seven sine 69 divided by the sine of 26. I get 14.9. So on question number one, the answer should be about 14.9. Okay, on question number three, always start with the side and angle that you have across from one another. So 27 over the sine of 39 is equal to, we're finding side BC, so we're finding little a on this one, a over the sine of 34. We cross multiply, twenty seven sine thirty four will equal a times the sine of 39. Divide both sides by the sine of 39. So a is equal to 27 times the sine of 34 divided by the sine of 39. Put that in our calculators. by the sine of 39, and I get about 23.99. If I go to the nearest tenth, that should make it 24. If I go to the nearest tenth. Okay, let's go down here and do one where you have, uh, find an angle. Okay, so for this one, it's going to be a little different. We're looking for angle B. And it's across from the 25 yards. We still cross multiply. So 25 times the sine of 98 is equal to 37 sine b. We divide by 37, so the sine of B is equal to 25 sine 98 over 37. 
I don't want the sine of b, I want angle b by itself. In order to get b by itself, I'm going to do the inverse sine on both sides. So b, angle b, is equal to the sine inverse of 25 sine 98 over 37. Make sure to put a parentheses around that whole fraction when you type it into your calculator. Second sine, 25 sine 98 divide 37. I get about 41.997. Forty-one point nine nine seven. And if I go to the nearest tenth, that would make it forty-two. So angle B is about forty-two. Okay, on the back side here it says solve the triangle, which means find all the angles and find all the sides. To solve a triangle, you have to find every part and piece, every side, every angle. So we need to know what angle A is, angle B, angle C, side A, side B, and side C. Just looking at the picture, we know three out of the six things already. Angle A is 15 degrees. Angle C is 137. You can quickly find the third angle by subtracting the two you know from 180, which is 28. We also know side little c is 29. From here, we would set up the law of sines to find the missing two sides. So when I want to find a, little a, a over the sine of 29 would equal, no, the, that's not right. A goes across from the 15. My bad. I'm getting in a hurry, not paying attention. A is across from that 15 degree angle. And then the 29 is across from the sine of 137. From there, you cross multiply to figure out A. To find little b, little b is across from the 28. and cross multiply to find B. And that's solving. Solving means you find all the angles and all of the sides.